Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. This is part four of the Stamp Concrete Pool Deck series. We're going to do the cleaning, the sawing, and the sealing in this video. So I'm going to just go over with you each step. This is a really important part of the, of the stamp process. I mean, this is the finished product. So, you, you know, this is, you got to make sure this thing comes out right. So what we're doing is we, we usually brush off the, the release agent first so we can do our sawing. We want to do our sawing before we do all the, the washing and the cleaning. So we get all the loose dust off, most of the loose dust off by just brushing it so we can snap our chalk lines. Um, that's what we're doing right now. We're laying out the saw joints. We're cutting this thing. We like to cut pool decks up pretty good to try to control as much of the cracking as possible, if not all of it. And we still, like to make the saw joints, you know, look nice too around the pool, around the pool, and look, make them look consistent from one side to the other. So we're laying out this big side. We're going to do eight by eight squares because that's about 16 feet wide. And then on the other side, we're going to line up the line up the cross joints on the other side. But we'll cut since that's a four foot wide section over there. We'll cut that into like four by fours. So it's always a good good idea to score the pool deck. We don't want it to crack. We're using the soft cut saw. We're using our electric one on this one. We got a gas one too, a little bit bigger one, the the 150. But we're using this electric 390 because we like to make sure that this thing cuts really really straight. And, um, and it's really accurate. You can really take your time with it. So that's why we're using the electric one on this one. I've had that thing for years and years and years. That thing works really good. It cuts down about an inch and a quarter, which is plenty for a four inch thick concrete deck to control the cracks. So as you can see, we're getting them, me and Luke are over there finishing laying out that side and Darren's cutting the saw joints and I got the two girls brushing off the dust as we're going. Sawing expansion joints and concretes, it's a very important part of the project. You know, uh, if you haven't checked out part one, two, and three, I'll have links for that at the end of the video so you can check them out. Part one is about the forming and the prep. Part two is about the pouring the concrete and part three is the stamping process. So this part is about finishing it up, making it all look good and pretty. If you don't know me, my name's Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors Incorporated. We specialize in all kinds of concrete flat work. So if you like that kind of stuff, you know, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. Hit the little bell notification. I come out with a couple videos a week about the kinds of things we do and trying to teach you guys and help you guys learn about concrete. we'll get all the saw joints in this thing and the next thing we do after that is we'll start washing this off so we saw it we wash it and clean it and then and that's all and we strip the forms that's all done usually the day after we get it stamped if it's a good day out and then we have to wait a day, 24 hours, for it to dry out before we can seal it. So it's kind of a four day process, you know, getting it all formed and prepped, getting it poured and stamped, and then we get it cleaned and then we get it sealed. Quite a bit to this. That's why these things are so expensive. For a stamp concrete pool deck like this, you know, an average cost for everything, not including the gravel work, but the average cost to do the concrete part of it is about $15 a square foot. I mean, if it's if it's a really, really big one, this one's about almost 1,500 square feet. You know, you can drop down the cost a little bit, but there's a lot of work to this, more than what it seems like. So you, you gotta make sure you price it right if you're doing this for a business. You know, and you, you want to try to stay reasonable, but I mean, compared to pavers, if someone was going to do pavers around a pool, uh, fifteen dollars a square foot is is really reasonable. It's going to cost a lot more than that to do pavers. 
All right, so we got this thing almost all sawed up. Um, we got to strip those forms too. If you remember, if you watched any of the other parts, we use those Z pool forms for the inside, cope up the inside of this pool, as well as the outside edge. So we got to get those forms stripped off too. Those Z pool forms work really good. That has a liner in it that leaves like a rock textured face to that pool deck, which is pretty cool. And they have a special tool you use to, to strip the forms. And that's what Luke's doing right now. He's pulling the inside face of those forms off. And they come off in about, they're about eight foot sections. So we'll get those all pulled off. And we can reuse them. So we'll clean them up. Put them on the truck, you know, and bring them back. But you can use those multiple times. I'll have a link for that. I'll have a link for that Z pool forms down in the description if you guys want to check them out, you know. Um, sometimes pools will come with their coping on it and you just pour up to their coping. And sometimes they don't. So it's it's a good little business to be in if you know how to do that. You can charge extra for that too. You can charge per lineal foot for you guys in the business. You can charge up to, you know, 20 to $30, or even $40 a lineal foot to put those Z pool forms on. see it's quite a little process to get them off there's there's actually three pieces actually there's a top piece there's that rubber liner and then there's the part of the form that that friction fits into the pool the little metal strip that holds the liner on so there's three parts to those forms That tool takes them right off though, it works pretty good. You just gotta be careful not to scratch the liner. Hey, if you guys, how many of you guys out there do pool decks? You know, and where are you from? Leave me a comment down in the, in the comments. Um, and, and for you guys watching that don't pour concrete or concrete pool decks, let me know if this is something you wanna do. I mean, I can, I can uh, come out with some type of course or something teaching you how to pour concrete or even even how to be in the concrete business if you'd like to do this for a business you know I don't know if you're if you're working for somebody right now and you're kind of thinking about starting your own business you gotta let me know that guys I I've been in business 39 years I've been doing this for 39 years and you know I started out when I was 19 years old so I I'm, I'm, I'm 54 now so I've been in a long time I could probably help teach you guys how to start your own business if you wanted to all right, Darren's just putting the finishing touches on those saw joints, making everything look really nice. And then we're going to start the washing process here. So when we wash a pool deck, we kind of wash it kind of like a car almost, you know, we we like to use a pressure washer. We, we don't want to get the tip too close, but we like a little bit more pressure than just using a hose. And we'll, we'll wash off 90% of that release powder. And again, the release powder is used for a couple reasons. It's used to help the stamps from sticking to the concrete when you stamp it. And it also adds an antiquing color when you when you press those stamps into the surface a little bit of that release powder gets pressed into the surface too which gives it a two-tone color effect kind of a mottled effect this concrete was dark gray and the antique release agent was charcoal so when you're done sealing it it makes it look really cool with those two colors so Darren's gonna go around and get most of the release agent off first you can see I'm brushing a little bit of the release agent off the inside liner of that pool. Luke's just scraping off any little fuzzies on the coping part, the inside coping part, making that look nice and nice and neat, clean. And once we get most of the release powder off, then we can start washing it, scrubbing it with, uh, we use Dawn dish detergent and just some brushes and give it a good scrub. You got to make sure you get all the loose release powder off or when you go to seal it, 
the sealer just won't bond correctly. So this is a really, really important part of the finishing process, the finished look. If you seal over some release powder that's not bonded, then it's just the sealer is just going to flake off and it's not going to look very good. So you got to take your time and scrub this thing really well. This took us, there was five of us here, you know, three, us three guys and, and the two girls. It From start to finish on this video, it took us about five hours to do this whole thing. Between stripping the forms, sawing it, cleaning it, getting everything loaded on the truck. So it is quite a little process. You got to figure that in if you're figuring these for jobs. You know, you're going to almost figure in a day to get this thing cleaned up. As you can see, that pool deck had a little walkway with it, too. Once this thing gets all landscaped up, it's going to look really nice. Get the fence around it. You know, we could have probably probably could have had two pressure washer going going here on this one would have really sped up the process a little bit, um, but we didn't. I didn't think of that in the beginning because there's no way of really hurrying this. That release dust comes off, you know, at its own pace. All right, here we go with the scrubbing. So we we mixed up five gallons of water, a little bit of Dawn dish detergent in there. And we're just going to scrub that thing really good. And then Darren's going to come back behind us and rinse that off one last time. With the texture, you know, this is a stone textured pool deck. So with the texture, you just got to go back and forth every which way. Make sure you get into all the little creases. Clean out all the saw joints. And then that release powder, the Dawn dish detergent kind of breaks it up. That release powder will just kind of melt right off. And the, the small parts of it that got pressed into the surface will stay usually in the lower parts of the, of the texture. Like I said, if, if you guys, again, if you guys don't know me, my name's Mike Day. I own Days Concrete Floors. I've been in business since I was 19 years old. I didn't know anything when I started. I, ha I had been working for a commercial company for a few years before starting my own business. So, I mean, I knew how to do concrete, but I didn't know anything about business, how to run a business. But uh, So I've learned everything all on my own. You can see we're going to just work our way around that pool that get that big part done. The small part will go pretty fast. You can, you know, wait till the end of the video too, guys. You're going to see what kind of sealer I use. You just I've used all different kinds of sealers on pool decks and the one we use now, I've had the best luck with. It doesn't flake, it doesn't peel, it doesn't turn white. Uh, a lot of these acrylic sealers now, they're, the quality of them isn't as good as it used to be. But this one we use, you'll see, is, is a really good one. I, I highly recommend you, you guys use it too. But you got to make sure that this thing's clean. And, you know, you really want it dry too before you seal. So we'll clean this today and let it dry out and come back tomorrow if the weather's good. If the weather's not good, if it if it rains or showers or anything on it, then we gotta let it dry another day before we seal it. You don't want too much moisture in the concrete when you put a sealer on it. Even though the sealer we're putting on is breathable, you still want it fairly dry. There's nothing worse than having a sealer that fails. That's why we use the sealer we do. We've never had a failure with it. Where before, you know, sometimes you'd spray it on, even though you went by all the manufacturer's specs, you'd still have some parts that turn white, but not anymore. We don't run into those problems anymore with this sealer. Yeah, 
head there and it's got that almost all cleaned up now you can see how nice that looks once it's cleaned up it's got a nice dark gray to it with some black highlights and then we're going to get to the sealing part here so again the sealer the sealing part is going to be the next day after this is all dry Hey everybody, Mike here with EverythingAboutConcrete.com. So we're here today to put the sealer on this stamp concrete pool deck we did a couple days ago. We got it all cleaned and washed off yesterday, let it dry. Now we're going to put the sealer on it. And for sealer, right now Darren's, Darren's just blowing off any dust. But for sealer, we use a stamp shield from Trinic, and we really like this sealer. You can see right here. That's the sealer we use right there, Trinic Stamp Shield. And the reason the reason we use it, it becomes, this stuff doesn't chip or peel. It's uh, easy to apply, it, it enhances the color a little bit. It's resistant to all kinds of staining, and it's specifically designed for use on stamp concrete. So we've had really good luck with that, and that's what we're gonna do. We got a stone textured stamp surface here. So that's gonna look really good on this. And uh, anyway, check it out. Hey guys, I can't stress enough about how using a good quality sealer on stamp concrete, how important that is. Um, if you use an inferior one and it starts to flake and whiten and, and peel off, then the stamp concrete is going to look really bad in a very short amount of time. I mean, within a week or month and definitely by the following year. So that's why I recommend using stamp shield so like I said we got to blow off all the dust real quick yesterday we cleaned this thing we sawed it and cleaned it it's all dried out so we're blowing off all the dust and we're gonna spray this sealer on I, I prefer spraying it versus rolling it um, it goes on really nice and light two light coats is best and sometimes sometimes you can put three on but two usually does the trick and we use a really good sprayer, something that the seals, the sealer's not going to erode the seals in it. As you can see, I'm dumping in the stamp shield now. We'll put in about two and a half, three gallons at a time. And then we'll start spraying a really light coat on that thing. I'm getting it ready while Dale and Darren's cleaning, pumping it. All right, so Darren's applying the sealer. We use a stainless steel sprayer because the sealer's got acetone in it and that's the best sprayer we found so what the acetone won't mess up the seals in the sprayer we go over it with a really really light coat we're going to go right back over it again with another light coat and we'll put three on if we have to but usually two does it As you could see when Darren was spraying that sealer on how it darkens and enhances the color in the concrete and after the second coat it's all going to look like that so it's going to be hard to tell from this angle right here but it's going to have a really nice mottled colored effect um, the sealer does enhance the color a little bit but it doesn't leave a really thick film on the surface so it doesn't leave it really slippery either it does chemically bond with the concrete and you know like I said in earlier it doesn't flake or peel off it doesn't whiten um, that's why this sealer we've we've decided on using this sealer for all our stamp concrete you can see in parts of this angle that it's darkening the color a little bit and enhancing it and uh, I guess it was just the way the Sun was hitting the, the deck on the angle of this video it didn't show it all that way but it did end up all turning out really really nice looking so Darren's just working his way back, spraying on a nice light coat. That pump up sprayer works really good for putting just a nice mist on there. You definitely don't want to get concrete sealers on too thick. Thin is best. Thick is not good. This stuff dries really fast too. Like I said, it's got an acetone base. So you can basically just do your first coat, then go right back around with your second coat. And it's going to dry within minutes and, and then you're done. That's the best pump up sprayer that we've found. I'll, I'll have a link for that down in the description guys if you guys want to get one like that. If you do a lot of spraying of sealers that's the one to have. 
And as long as you always clean it out after, like we got that can of acetone right there. After we get done, we'll put in a little bit of that, clean it right out, and we're good to go for the next one. If you're using different kind of sealers with a different carrier, like, like a xylene type carrier, then just rinse it out with xylene or even mineral spirits. So this is how you seal the deck, guys. You just nice light coat, nothing really that hard about it. You just got to understand a little bit about sealers and how they work and, and where to get the best ones. I'll have a link for Trinic down in the description also, guys, if you guys want to check out that. I mean, you can buy it right online. They'll ship it right to your house. And uh, you shouldn't have any trouble using that. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching.